chemically speaking, your sugar treats are a mix of glucose and fructose. Now, the exact blend depends on the nature of the snack. Your tongue doesn't give a damn. Sugar is sugar, and it's fabulous. But the nether regions of the gut are mindful of the blend. The small intestine loves fructose, gobbling it up. But the liver and the colon find the presence of fructose somewhat more challenging. This is what a team of researchers from Princeton University recently discovered. The team found that the cells lining the small intestine come with fructose processing equipment. The special sugar gates, called the GLUT5 gate, ushers fructose in. So intestinal cells delight in the fructose's presence. The team found that once the fructose had crossed the threshold of the cell, ketohexokinase sealed its fate. The enzyme popped a phosphate on, effectively trapping the fructose inside. And then it was assimilated. Okay, okay. It's not assimilated per se. It's turned into glucose. The team found that the fructose that had been turned into glucose was used to provide the small intestine with the fuel that it needs to transport a host of nutrients port side to the liver. Now, for the record, the small intestine is not that small, so it does burn through quite a lot of power, but there is inevitably a little over. This excess glucose that has been generated is generously shared with the rest of the body. The nutrients are transported into the hepatic portal vein and from there they proceed to the liver. It's here that they are finally assimilated and the generosity of the small intestine is much appreciated. The liver sets about whipping up batches of this, that, and the other. Now, the liver is a master chef, but mm, he's not that fond of the fructose sugar. Join us for this episode of Better Body Chemistry TV as we find out why the liver doesn't like fructose and how this aversion impacts your health. Better Body Chemistry TV is brought to you by Dr. Sandy, a scientist turned gremlin buster, helping you battle sugar gremlins, hef lumps, and other health horribles through better body chemistry. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health. Now, if you were a chemist and you looked at a molecule of fructose and compared it to a molecule of glucose, you'd conclude they are exactly the same. Each molecule consists of six carbons, 12 hydrogens, and six oxygens. But to burn a six carbon sugar, the molecule needs to be split in half. And the two halves are each made up of three carbons. These then need to be fed into the Krebs cycle to create energy. When glucose splits, two identical molecules are created. When fructose splits, the split does not create identical molecules. A dihydroxyacetone phosphate, which as the name suggests, it bears a phosphate is made, but the other three carbon molecule is a glyceraldehyde. This guy is missing. The phosphate appendage. Oh, gosh. The phosphate is a requirement for further processing. So the unbalanced sugar has to be balanced. The phosphate needs to be added. Now, to be fair, this is not an exceptionally hard reaction to do, but it is a bother, and it's one the liver would rather not do. You see, the reaction requires a specialized enzyme and some ATP energy. When it's done and dusted, it creates a dihydroxyacetone phosphate ready for duty. Plus, 
a molecule of uric acid and an ever so slight energy shortage. So what? Well, the fancy footwork required to handle the unbalanced sugar upsets body chemistry a little. You see, the uric acid molecule needs to be processed. Failure to do so, it puts you at risk of gout. And that energy shortage disrupts energy mass, leading to more fat being produced in-house, and the more fat, oh, it accumulates inside the liver. The team found that the excess fructose didn't all end up in the liver. Some of it made its way into the colon. For the residents of the colon, well, this fructose is an unexpected windfall. Food, glorious food, for those that can, they tuck in. But this changes the who's who in the gut soon. And this, too, has consequences for body chemistry. It's not that the fructose is bad, but when the fructose delivery exceeds the capacity of the small intestine to process it, problems arise. Now, the point at which this overwhelm happens will be different for everyone. In fact, the team found that small intestines could get better at gobbling fructose the more they practiced. But there always came a point where the fructose got through. And this, in the long run, sets up bad body chemistry. Well, you can help your liver handle this slightly unbalanced little sugar molecule by consuming less of it and doing it slowly. Step one, eat it. Don't drink it. And when you do drink it, eat something with it. So your small intestine has time to process it. That way, you'll help create better body chemistry and better health. Interested in discovering more ways to create better body chemistry or need a little help getting your body chemistry on track? Visit our website at www betterbodychemistry.com. Browse our library, enroll in one of our courses or programs. The advice is simple to follow and based on real science, not hype. You know someone who loves sweet things? Share this video with them so they know how to enjoy those sweet treats without compromising body chemistry. And if you enjoyed this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel so you catch future episodes of Better Body Chemistry TV. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time. Remember, small things can make a big difference to your health.